Okay, so got a three quarter inch socket go on here. Go ahead and use this. Just barely. Smell the gear oil already. I was actually thinking I got too big a pan, but it seems to be okay. So that's the axle shaft, deuce and a half, bolts to the flange. That's why I wore the gloves. Now I have a socket that fits this. This is what holds your, all your bearings. So you want it to be clean. You want to keep it clean. Put your socket on there. take much force. Take the outer nut off. You got your little keeper that you fold over. Now you have an inner nut and a lot of times that's not, not all that tight at all. I don't normally wear gloves. I mean, you know, since I'm not in the state of California, this stuff doesn't cause cancer, right? Ha ha ha. <clears throat> so, now that you got that, see how easy that was? There's a little piece of, that's a little piece of um, cork that goes in this notch. That's your outer wheel seal. Here's your outer bearing. You see the oil's pretty much washed the grease out. Now, I'm gonna take the whole hub off. Now this thing's heavy, so you gotta be ready for it. Okay. All right. Here's your inner bearing. Slide off. Oh, your inner seal's usually pressed on there. So I'll tap around, try to work that off. Go ahead and take the gloves off. Let's see if I can not get my hammer dirty.
inner wheel seal. Now you can see all the crud, trash in here. So I think I'm gonna. Things just caked in it. So I'm gonna stop for now. Get my steam cleaner over here and uh, clean this all up. Make it nice and pretty. Make it easier to work on. Y'all gonna clean that off faster? Yeah, make sure you eat all that junk. Well, don't eat my parts, but you can eat all the leaves you want. Silly little baby goats getting into everything. And for some reason, they really like cobwebs. So, let them eat, I guess. Nom, 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 nom. Alright, so, got my steam cleaner done. Working good. You can see it looks way better. All loose grease is gone. Uh, these shoes, these shoes are kind of worn, and they've been soaked in brake fluid. So I have a brand new set of shoes, and I will be replacing them. So I've already taken the spring off. Usually, what I do is turn the upper slack adjustments all the way in. That one's still out a little bit, but usually where this tab's hitting here, you're fine. And then this spring that goes between those two slots there, goes in that slot and goes in this slot over here. You can just grab it with a pair of pliers and get it out. Now, when they're farther out, um, that can be more difficult to do. So now that they're free, I have to take these studs out. It's just a bolt, uh, nut on the back, and bolt on the front. And these adjusting bolts, they're oblong. So you turn the thing on the back and it pushes the bottom shoe in or out. So when you readjust these things, you have to adjust from the bottom and the top of each shoe. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those out now and uh, get these shoes off. clips clips off down here they're like a horseshoe now let's take these horseshoe clips off down here I usually just put something on there get them Come on I might need a smaller wrench yeah let me get a smaller wrench So, I'm gonna take these horseshoes off down here. Put this, put the wrench on the two tongs of the of the horseshoe, and just like that. So that you got a gap behind it. Take your screwdriver and just pry it until you get it off. So the bottom's free. And I'm gonna work on these. Take them out. I think it's yeah, it's like it's 
like 9 16 or half in the back. I think it's half. Front should be three quarter. Yep. Okay. Spring out of the way. Now these are just pretty much guides for the shoes. They're not generally in here very tight. Every turn. Fight till the bitter end, some of them. Breaks you off. You see, there's a little collar on this one. Goes in there. Get that out. This has got a spring and a catch collar, keeper collar. There's that one. There's your really worn the materials, all soft shoe. So. The other side. aren't very tall. So trying to keep the socket on there can be trouble. Okay. 
I don't like to try to, if I take something off on one side, I like to try to put it right back on that same side. See how that's on there? Put that over there. I'll just leave those in there the way they are. Now, let me get this master or wheel cylinder off. I already took the banjo bolt out. The banjo bolt is what holds the brake line to it. And that is what allows the fluid to pass through the bolt and into the wheel cylinder. It's two bolts, two 916 bolts. I already took the banjo out. So. I already tell. It's gonna be kind of nasty. The cups are torn. The brake shoes didn't want to go in with spring pressure alone. So there's probably a bunch of junk. Oh, shoot. In the wheel cylinder. Could have been in there since the dawn of time. Now, there's a little like a dust heat shield goes over there, and you can see your cups or your your rubber covers. They're all look at all the gunk in there. I mean, just. This is a 13,000 pound truck and you want to make sure that it stops. So this, this is pretty dang nasty. Never fear. For luckily, they still make the parts. Got these from Midwest Military. I'm not sponsored by Midwest Military. They just had the best price on them at the time. Already had this one open. Get your new little push rods. They go in there comes with a whole new banjo bolt and a new collar here and the crush washers now I'm not going to change the collar some people say you know you should um, at some point I'm gonna put all new brake lines on this truck and if I go ahead and change the collar now I may damage the brake line that's there and I'm not ready to go ahead and change all the brake lines so I do not want to damage the current lines so let's go in like that that's what pushes your pistons oh look at that let's see how smooth that is so there's usually a, a spring in there and that's what pushes your pistons apart keeps tension because even though the shoe comes out you you always want that tension otherwise the shoe could miss your miss your notch and then everything will go candy wampus on you so i'm gonna go ahead and put this in i have new sets of shoes so the collar just fits over there put it right back in the hole can sometimes be difficult because you can't see everything that things lining up usually I get it through the heat shield slash dust cover first get one started 
Oh yeah, you can tell when it starts. And then worry about the second one. But usually the second one's much easier. Alright. Prove me right for once. So just tighten this baby down. Easy peasy. So there's your new wheel cylinder. Ready for your new shoes. Let me go get the new shoes. They're in the back of the truck in a box. I'll be right back. Ah, new shoes. Mmm, those are nice. So, doesn't matter which side they go on. They're not, uh, they're not left or rights or anything like that. So I'm going to take the spring and the keeper out of this one. All right. I'm going to go ahead and drop it in this one. Put the keeper on. Put the spring on. Alright, so that's keepers on, springs on. Turn it so it stays down, pointing down. Now, Take this other collar off. Put it in this one. Collar back on. Okay, now this shoe is ready to go back on. So the trick is you gotta get it over this. And sometimes when they've been rebuilt, they've been repainted. So line your Line your tab up on there. Push it till there you go. Holes are started. There you go. All right. So let me start these nuts. That one started. Of the shoe too, which is a mirror image of the first shoe you did. Put that through a hole, right? Collar with a cup up, spring. Another bolt through that hole. Keeper, cup towards the shoe, just like that. Okay, kind of get it started on here. Push it up in there. Now make sure you can maneuver this at an angle to get it started. You can sort of see, oh, I lost the bottom. Start those nuts. A nut and a lock washer. So make sure you have a lock washer. <laughs> 